Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima. And in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about Git and how you can have a little bit more advanced use, usage of it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, so we can receive the next videos. And if you haven't watched the previous videos, uh, I'm going to post here uh, the playlist so you can see how we set up we, we, we set up a unix terminal on windows how we set up git repository uh, the theory of git and the in the basics of git so everything is going to be available for you i'm also going to put the the series of videos that i did on rest assured in, in in java api with rest assured so it's going to be every, every, everything is going to be there for you so let's start here so i'm going to be using the repository for the Java REST API automation with REST Assure. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can use Git Gnore. So a lot of stuff, so Git is going to hold in, in, in version control every file that you have, but there is no point of having some specific files there, right? So especially, specifically files that are auto-generated, like a, a jar file, a binary file that is compiled and is generated. You don't need to send to uh, to the repository because uh, those files are auto generated right and it's going to change on every new on every new push uh, or on every new code sorry also uh, IDE files like IntelliJ Eclipse or, or any other one Sublime Atom uh, Visual Studio Code you don't you don't need those because those are IntelliJ uh, are specific for the de de developing environment of every developer so uh, I'm going to show you how you can how can you add those right so what I'm going to do I'm going to open Visual Studio Code I have a shortcut here uh, for Visual Studio Code and this is Visual Studio Code uh, and you can see that we have already Git Ignore here with some stuff right so why I added Visual Studio Code is for Visual Studio to generate some of the files you can see that the project it it was just generated uh, CRC was so I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code to show you how how does that work right so right now I don't have anything if I do git status uh, I don't have anything here on to commit or, or anything that was new let's say so when I open I have a, a shortcut for Visual Studio which I call code and it's opening and you're going to see that Visual Studio is going to start creating some specific files for Visual Studio. So settings is new, uh, project is new, he already put some, some stuff here on, on CRC as well. So uh, if we take a look now, if I do git status, I have a, a couple files there, a couple files that I don't want to, to send. Right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, IntelliJ, which is uh, bigger here. So see, there are some specific files. I'm going to open my gitignore, dot gitignore, in Unix dot, it's hidden files, right? But then you have access here and you can see already some files, some, some content is in one. There is one specific for IntelliJ, for IntelliJ. So what I'm going to do is, you also can see that there are some package files here already. Everything that's .jar, .war, .nar, .zip, everything's already here. I'm also going to show how we can auto-generate these whenever you are creating a repository. So we saw three files. So it was a class path, a, a project, and the settings is in an, an actual directory. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put uh, class path. I'm going to put, uh, what was the next one? It was project. And I'm going to put dot settings. Okay. So when I come back here, git status, it's already gone. There is, those files are not, it's not going to be mapped on, on, on GitHub anymore or, or any other repository. Git is not going to map those anymore. Uh, but then it's important to say that I never actually start version controlling those files. 
right? So this, those files would be new. So if I want to remove, uh, it's another process. If I want to put on Ginignore a, a file that's what, that's already on the version control because that file is already there. So if you need to do that, you first need to remove the file, do git rm, that's going to remove that from the repository and then you add on the git ignore. But now since these files were new, then uh, I just need to put it there and it's going to be ignored. Uh, the only thing that I have here is the git ignore changes. So if I do git add dash p, I already show you why dash p, it's going to show you everything that needs to change. And you already see that there, those changes that I did on IntelliJ, right? So uh, this is what I want. And then I do git commit dash m, adding visual studio code file projects file on git ignore. Git ignore. Awesome. Git push origin master. Awesome. Great. So now I showed when you need to add something, right? So I, we just added something to the git ignore. But when you create a repository, do you actually need to do all of that? Right. So let me show here when you create a repository, uh, let me create a two repository. So I'm going to do new and I'm going to create a Java repo. It's going to be, doesn't matter, I'm going to delete it later. Uh, I'm going to say I want to initialize a readme that's going to have a readme and I'm going to say this is going to be a Java project. And I'm going to create this repo. I'm going to copy here already. And I'm also just to make it faster, I'm going to create another repo. It's going to be a Rails repo. And I'm going to give a git ignore of Rails. Right? So I can choose the language here. I have Rails, I have Ruby. I have Java, Java, I have JavaScript, I'm not sure if it's too, too small, I have Java, I have Rails, I have Kotlin, probably Kotlin, Kotlin. All right, so now let me do Rails, and I'm going to create here. So now I have two repo, right? With the readme and git ignore. If I open the git ignore, I didn't do anything, right? So I just created a repo. There is a lot of files already here that it that are files that should be ignored for a Rails project, right? If we go back to QA ops and do Java repo, there is also a git ignore here that has a bunch of files related to a Java repository that should be ignored. Right. And this is how I had these initial files for for the Java project that I that I just showed you. Right. So this is the initial when you create a repository, you should already put the, those git ignore the default git ignore that comes uh, for the language uh, of your choosing because it's going to save you time. Awesome. Great. So now. We also saw that we, uh, uh, dealing with Git is a lot of typing, a lot of, uh, you need to type a lot. Uh, and uh, the terminal should be a pleasant experience. Shouldn't be like, holy shoot, uh, I, don't, I need to open my terminal. It's going to take some time. I need to, uh, it's going to be a hassle. It's, it doesn't need to be a burden. The, the terminal experience should be the same experience, the same pleasant experience as using a Chrome or, or, or Fire Explorer. So, and for that, you need to get used to it, but now also you need to set it up, right? The, the terminal, uh, uh, you can see that my terminal has some different stuff than a, 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 a regular terminal. So a regular terminal would be something like this, like a vanilla terminal. You don't, you don't have any, uh, any coding highlight, any code, coding uh, autocomplete, any colors. Uh, it's just a vanilla repos, uh, terminal, right? So. Uh, you need to set up a, your terminal in order to give you most out of it, right? And one of the things are aliases. So aliases is, is a shortcut for a command. 
uh, that you don't that you type really often, right? So uh, I'm going to show you more in details when you start talking about Unix. But uh, let's say I have a GST. GST is my shortcut for Git status. Right? I I don't have to type Git status. I just need to type uh, GST. And if I do type GST, you're going to say that GST is an alias for Git status. The same thing for Git checkout. It's a lot of typing Git checkout. So I have GCO, which is the same. Right, so if I do type GCO, it's going to is show me that it's an alias for the Git checkout. So these GCT and GCO are aliases that I that I set up on my Unix uh, terminal. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how you can have how you can set up Git itself for Git setup. Right, so we can do what we can do is there is a command for creating an alias on Git which is git config dash dash global because you don't want to remember that the dash dash global is going to set up for the whole uh, for the whole computer not for one specific repository and that's what you want right you want your alias for everything um, and I'm going to say alias dot alias that means that I want to create an alias and now I'm going to give it the name of my alias I'm going to say CI and I'm going to say which command that alias is for. I'm going to say commit. All right, so now I'm going to do another alias which is status and what's the command? Another alias which is CO for checkout and another alias which is BR for branch. So now I have a few aliases and how do I use it? I give the first command called git and then I do st and now I have git status I can do git co and it's going to do the git checkout uh, I can do git br which is going to say git branch and now I have a bunch of branches here I can choose one I can do git co and the name of the branch and I'm on the branch I can do git co master and it's going to go back to my master branch so and, and where does git do uh, uh, put that right so it, you can actually change the file remember that in the last video that I talk about this I'm going to post this video here there is a file called uh, git config yes git config and you're going to see that the alias are already here right so I can I can actually edit this file I can open on code just to make it easier okay now I put a new command here I'm going to say now I'm added in the file right so I'm going to say L for log I'm going to save the file I'm going to open my terminal and now I'm going to say git L and I have the log so you, you, you either use this command that I just showed here or you can edit the file and put the command straight there um, it's it's up to you right Awesome. So that's how you can do alias, right? So uh, I'm going to show you next video on, on when you start talking about Unix, how you can create Unix aliases, and then you can uh, you can combine those if you want, right? Great. So the last topic that I would like to show you, talk to you about, it's how you can resolve conflicts on on Git. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new uh, repost a new branch and uh, let's use the command that we just oh by the way I have an alias for git which is g so see g is an alias for git and this is my unix alias so now instead of using saying git br for branch I can say gbr g br because git g is an alias for git and BI is the one that we use. So now I I don't have to type git. I just need to type G. Right? I do have a another uh, alias called GB. That's my personal uh, personal alias for branch. Right? So I just type GB. Uh, awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the command that we just 
uh, that we just use git checkout dash b conflict video right and i created a branch for uh creating some conflict on on the video right so this is the video related to java api i'm going to open my user test and i'm going to do some changes here right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change some some specific code here so i'm going to change these four pages and i'm going to move these for three i'm going to say change my name to new Raphael and old engineer test i'm going to change this also new i'm not worried if it's going to fail or not i'm just want to show you how 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 the conflict uh it's it's how, how you can resolve conflict right so i'm going to also change here to page so i'm going to say three uh, I need also to change here because those is three. This is going to be three, uh, and and that's it. That's that's fine. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do? I'm going to commit this change, so git status. So I'm going to do git add, and I'm going to git add dot gst. Now I do have another alias which for git commit, but then let's use this one git commit uh, dash m for message and uh, generate conflicts. This is git checkout, not git commit. Awesome. So now I'm going to go to my master git checkout master and i'm going to create some some the same changes there because i want to resolve I, I want to merge and show you the conflict if i merge now it's going to say hey this, this change but this is fine if you want to merge we can merge but now i want to force the change the the issue right and the issue is when you create a uh when you change the same file in different moments, right? So I'm going to change this here. We change here. I'm going to put Rafael Lima, engineer test uh, London. Uh, now here, Rafael Lima. I'm going to this, I put page, I put three. I'm going to leave it three, it's fine. I'm going to leave it this here as well i'm going to put user underscore id and janet uh, bob weaver awesome so now i have my changes here i can i'm going to create a commit git commit git add dot git commit dash m uh, generating conflicts on master awesome so now i'm going to do a merge which is git merge what's the name of the branch that we created git branch uh conflict video git merge conflict video so now it's uh, telling me uh we did some auto merging there was some conflicts auto merging failed so there are a few ways you can do that. Well, let, let me show you through uh, Video Studio Code. So if I open, uh, if I do code dot, it's going to open the file here. What was the file? Git status to see where I generated the conflict, user test. So let me open user test. You can see that it has generated the, the the conflicts and it shows shows me right so this is the 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 conflict on the head branch the sorry the the head of the master branch and this is the changes on uh the conflict video change if i open on a regular uh editor it's just going to check show you this this is the one in, in the branch that you are 
and this is in the branch that you're trying to merge from. So and you, you would have to uh, remove this line and, and choose between this and this. Right? But this is a very simple uh, file ed editor that I'm using, which is VI. I'm going to show you later how you use it. But if you have another editor, it's going to help you with some. Right, so you can you can accept your current change with the change on master. Uh, we can accept the incoming change with the the change coming from the branch. I can accept both, and I can compare the changes. Right, I can compare the changes, and now Visual Studio Code is going to put them side by side, and I can actually see visually a little bit better. And then I can choose uh, which change I do want. Right, so this is a, a visual aiding that you have. Uh, if I go to IntelliJ, IntelliJ has a VCS, virtual control system. You have Git, and you have here, why am I? So VCS, uh, and then I have here resolve conflicts. And now it gives me a choice. Do I want to accept my changes or theirs? In this case, mine is the master branch because I'm on master branch trying to get from the conflict. And theirs is on the conflict. Right? That would be the same if you're trying to download something from the branch and you have conflicts on whatever is on the remote, remote repository and in your changes. You can just say, if you, say, if you know that in your case, your stuff is old, you just say accept theirs and you're going to accept their changes. But then you can choose merge and you're going to have a visual aiding of the, what, it, what actually changed. So in this case, I changed page in one, I didn't change there, so uh, it's only one, on one side. But here I changed two stuff, right? So here I remove the E and here I add the S. So there is a conflict that was generated and I need to choose which one I want. The same here, the same goes for here, Rafael Lima. Here is just Rafael, which is my merging result. And this is the, what I change on the branch. So see, changes from conflict branch and changes from master. So it's going to show you visually everything that changed, right? And whatever it, it was not, uh, there was no conflict, it's just going to, you would be able to merge. So here it, I just changed the three, and here in the other one here on the Marta is, is two. So it's, it would just try to merge that. Right? No issues there. So you need to go through what you want to change, and it's going to be resolved. So let's say I want to merge. Little by little, right? So IntelliJ helps me out. I don't want to merge here, but I do want to merge pages. So I can just click here and uh, it already changed. I can go to Rafael Lima and say, now I want Rafael Lima and I want these changes. And now, but now this one, I want this change. I don't want that change. And I can put here, right? So I can decide exactly what I want to change. Yes, this one I want. Uh, and so on and so forth, right? Let's say I don't want to accept any of these. Let me cancel, discard, and cancel merge. I can just say I want to accept uh, my changes. So I accept that changes, and and you can see that you already accepted, right? So there isn't uh, anything else to do. See. Rafael Lima, Engineer Test London, there is no more conflict. What I need to do is I need to come here and I'm still on the merge state. Right? So if I do git status, it's, still, it's actually helped me out saying, hey, all conflicts fixed, but you are still merging. So I need to actually conclude my merging. So I do git commit and it's already put my, a message there, merge branch conflict video. And I, so if I do, so if I do git log here, then I can actually see that my mer my branch was merged, right? So that's great. So that's how you actually resolve a conflict, right? Uh, if it's a simple thing, uh, usually I do the quick quickest way. Uh, but then when there is a complex, a lot of things changing, uh, I need to use a visual aiding uh, tool that is going to help me out. 
So you can see that Visual Studio Code, which is free, also IntelliJ Community Edition, which is also free, helps you out with that. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, of course, this branch that I just created is going to be deleted. There is no reason to uh, have that branch there. So if you like it, give the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because in the next videos I'm going to start talking about Unix and how you can set up uh, what are the actual details of how you use the terminal in the Unix level, right? The commands that you need to use, how you create alias. I use I use it here alias for GitHub, but I can use alias for anything related to my computer. I can create alias to go into folders. I can create uh, I can create alias to to simplify a big command that I need to execute more often. So there are various usage that you can do, and you can and you in the same way that I'm setting up the computer, you can set set up a, a server or any, any Unix that you have access to. Right, so. Thank you for watching and see you on next videos.